I'm Rashid Ogunlari, coach, speaker, author, and I am delighted to be with the author of The Incredible Power of Staff Networks, Sharon Inkotaria. Now, I'm MBE. MBE, MBE yeah. now let's not forget that. <laughs> um, interesting background career. You were civil servant for many years. You're author of this book, and you've always had a passion, or for a long time had a passion and interest in staff networks. Yeah. They've been set up in all sorts of different fields in the civil service, there are many, your old background field, you see them across many public sector organisations, yes. um, and not just public sector organisations, they cover a whole range of things from LGBT groups to black, Asian, ethnic minority staff groups and so on. I wanted us to talk a little bit about that and I know okay. that you've got a lot of expertise around that. <laughs> What's your take, first of all, on, on why, why we've seen the growth of staff networks over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 plus years? I think there are a number of reasons, but the, the, for me, the, the, mon the fundamental is that support. That's the key reason. Staff need a voice in the workplace. Mm. And the, the smaller the group of people are, the less of a voice they have. I see. And so when they encounter certain barriers, often unseen barriers, it's very difficult to navigate some of those issues when you're by yourself. And is that why, therefore, the groups, some of the groups that we mentioned, so we're in organisations where groups, perhaps for, for women, for people with disabilities, yes. people black and ethnic minority, staff, um, LGBT groups and so on. So it might be groups who actually perceive that the voice is little, that the actual numbers of their staff, or visibly the numbers of their staff are small, where therefore there is a need for them to have a voice or to have support or to have an opportunity Absol to explore. Yeah, absolutely. There is something about testing, you know, when, when we go through situations at work, we are, we don't want to feel like, oh, are we being oversensitive? Yeah. Or is this something that happens to other people? And sometimes having that assurance that it's not you, yeah. there is a problem here because the yeah. same thing happened to me, can, can really help someone and encourage someone. Um, but I often encourage staff networks not just to say, okay, what, what's the problem you're facing, but let's work together and find a way forward. Mm -hmm. So I see the staff network as, yes, offering a support, encouragement, but more importantly, or equally importantly, providing some practical tools to help overcome that. So, um, Sharon, you made a really good po point there about staff networks, them growing and so on. I wanted to ask a little bit about, do you feel that the era that we're in, where so many organisations face change, they face challenges, there has been for a long time, there was um, recession, austerity, mm. um, organisations being asked to do less with more, you've seen it in the public sector, NHS, civil service areas that we both uh, um, done work or work with organisations. Do you think that's uh, um, pronounced why there's, there's more of a need for the staff networks and why they've increased? I think there's certainly, it certainly has, um, sh you know, shine a light on the need for this, for, for groups of people to come together mm -hmm. and, and find a way forward because when the pressure is on, mm -hmm. people have a tendency to behave in a way that they wouldn't normally. Right. And, and that could exhibit in a number of ways, you know, right. how you speak to people, your behaviour and so on. And how you handle that is not an easy thing to do. Right. And I say that because, you know, it's, it, it's finding the balance between, oh, they were a bit harsh with me. Mm. Am I being sensitive or is that... It, there's something about going into this group and testing the ground. Right, and this is interesting what yeah. you're saying. Because it, suddenly, as you were saying that, suddenly a number of the themes and the issues that staff... I guess that the thing about staff networks, they're there for staff based on the issues that staff face. And we yeah. know that some of the issues that come up time and time, isn't it, where people feel as though you've said they've been perhaps treated unfairly, perhaps there's been bullying, perhaps there's been harassment, yeah. perhaps they feel there's been prejudice, perhaps they feel as though they've been overlooked when it comes um, for promotion and so yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and, and so you're making an important point that sometimes when the pressure is on, the, the climate is such that it can be harder to tell, actually, is this fair, is this just happening to me? And Yeah, I, I think sometimes you can get so focused on you're trying to achieve your targets and achieve your goals, and when, when you are treated slightly unfairly, you say, well, it must be me, because everyone else is progressing. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily the case. It's not always you. There is sometimes a problem, a culture, um, and it becomes even more apparent when the pressure is on right and uh, right. i think staff networks can step in and say We've, we're seeing a pattern here there's something not quite right and we need to work together to fix it more importantly we need to highlight it to 
the senior managers or the change makers in the organisation right. and bring about that change that's required for uh, and staff I, And I guess in some areas that will explain the growth of particular types of staff networks. For example, there's been a big growth in black, Asian, minority ethnic staff networks, mm -hmm. um, for example. Um, and uh, that's an area whereby we know, I know that you and I have both done work, for example, with the NHS, for example, and yeah. I'm sure it's very similar, you can tell us a little bit more about that, and the civil service, where mm -hmm. what we see is many organisations where the higher up the tree you look, the few, the, the less diversity that you see. Yeah. Again, it's true for, for women in organisations yeah. too, this, these particular themes. So it sounds like in that environment, the, the need for these um, groups is even more um, a, 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 and pronounced. And I guess maybe that's where your book comes in, that you're mindful about people being effective. It's one thing just yes. having a voice, but then all of a sudden, if there's real issues, we need to be really effective as a network. Absolutely. I mean, the, the staff networks have been going for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, the, the format of a staff network in terms of people coming together has, has existed in organisations for, for years, mm -hmm. but it's never been formalised. It's just groups of people that come together informally mm -hmm. to have a rant or to get things off their chest. <laughs> and, or to have and, a lunch. Uh, or, 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 oh, yeah, that's lunch yeah, times yeah, and yeah. After, after work. Yeah. Uh, but what we have seen more and more of is this uh, move towards a, uh, a more professional uh, outfit, shall we say? Yeah. That that, and I'm I'm. You're right when you talk about effective. I I think it's so important for staff networks to be effective and have an impact, not just for their members, mm -hmm. but for the organisation as a whole. So let's get into some of those yeah. issues then, because then all of a sudden, so there's this need we've established for whatever reason the group, the, yeah. uh, the group that we talked about, okay. there is a need. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, that, that either that there's been a group there for a long period of time, it's well established, or somebody's, or there's been a realisation that we need to set up this staff network. Okay. And then there can be also, this is where all sorts of challenges can, yeah. can emerge. What do you, I'm going to just first of all ask you, what do you tend to see when you, when you first encounter a staff network? So I, want to, I, I wonder what your experience is, because, because I think the first thing that kind of jumps out at me is that the more the, the, more the climate is heightened or the issues of the challenge or the austerity or what have you, mm. the more important that network is, but therefore it puts a lot of pressure on these people who are staff, this is an additional thing to their job, yeah. where it becomes pressurised and the need for them to be effective becomes m even more important. So tell me, what's your observation and what are your, your first tips for any staff networks that are oh. just about to spring up or that they're already there? Um, my observations are so varied because uh, depending on the organisation will, you know, um, but what I have seen as a, as a common thing coming through is that organisations are changing mm -hmm. and staff networks fail to recognise that. Right. So they're still stuck to when they first started the staff network, which addressed the need at the time. Right. And it's not to say that the need is no longer there, it's just you have to have a different strategy to address the need. Right. And, and I find that sometimes staff networks are stuck. Right. You know, and, and that leads to frustration for some people right. and, and so on. So the, but the magical thing presumably about that is that that means that whether it's a new network or if it's been established for a long time, what you say there is then a prompt for us to think about well, where are we now as an organisation? What's the need Absolutely. for the organisation and our staff now? Absolutely. It's about doing that temperature check right. on a regular basis. Um, understand, you know, have things really changed? Mm -hmm. Are they changing? Are we changing? It's almost doing an impact assessment on yourself as a staff network. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes um, some staff networks can get a little complacent, especially if they're quite established, they've got a good reputation, mm -hmm. they may have won an award, mm -hmm. they may think, oh, we've arrived, yes. and you know, so the, the, problem, yeah. but the problem isn't solved because right. people are still not progressing, they're not right. going through promotion, they're still harassment and bullying. Right. So your tactics need to change. What worked five years ago probably won't work right. this in so nowadays. The, the tactics might need to change, the issues of your membership may have changed, yep. so there might be a number of things that are kind of going on and, 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 and in the organisation, so you need to do that that temperature check. Yeah, absolutely. Can we start off with, you know, very briefly, before we close, I wanted to give a few tips both for those who are starting um, networks okay. and for those who are established networks. And ironically, we're sat here today and I'm just about to run a workshop and there's some people who are setting up a staff network that are coming along to it. Um, so I just want to ask, for those people who are establishing a staff network, 
and they recognise there is a need. What, can you give us some tips? And I'm sure that they're among the kind of yeah, tips that you Yeah, there are some share. tips. There are lots of... I mean, for me, it's having the right foundation. Right. And when I say that, I mean, what's the reason? Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the, the rationale? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that a staff... Net, what problem is the staff network going to solve? Mm -hmm. if, you can, if you can identify the answer to that, it's mm -hmm. then what's the evidence to support that? Mm -hmm. Really look for the evidence. For that evidence saying that this is a problem, people aren't getting promotion or people are being bullied exactly, or, exactly. or this group of people are really having problems with this or yes. that. Yes, and once you've got that, it's, it's about testing the waters with people who aren't necessarily in the target group. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, if it's an LGBT network, it's assessing it with straight allies, mm -hmm. as they call them. If it's a BME, maybe with white colleagues, mm -hmm. and, and so on, you, mm -hmm. you get the gist. It's about testing the waters. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to do. And the reason why I think that's mm -hmm. so important... Yeah, because some it, people might be... Sh surprised by that, thinking, well, hang on, and the need is here. For, for me, we're a women's group, we're an LGBT group, Absolutely. we're a black nation minority. But the staff network will not be able to solve the problem by itself. Right. It will need allies across the organisation right. to help them achieve yeah. the mission that they want. Including sometimes often then the, the support or the buy-in or making sure that management or leadership Absolutely. buy into what they're about Absolutely. and recognise them. And that leads me on to the next point mm. is, what's the bottom line? Right. If, you, if the organisation fails to address the issues that you've raised, mm -hmm. what's the impact on the bottom line? Mm -hmm. Now, a bottom line will mean different things to different organisations. Mm -hmm. It could be that monetary bottom line, the financial yes. implications. For the NHS, it's about patient care. Yes. If you do not improve outcomes for certain members of staff, certain groups of staff, the impact on patient care is devastating. Right. For, for the civil service, it's about delivering those public services right. will be hindered. So think through what is the bottom line. Yeah, really good point. Yeah, absolutely. And then begin to put in place your terms of reference. Yes. What, you know, how are you going to operate? What's the blueprint? What's the game plan, as mm -hmm. I call it? Yeah. And then think about the teams and the players. Right. There's lots of players involved, not just yes. those leading, but the members, yeah. the critical friends, yeah. your champion, what's yeah. that relationship yeah. going to look like? And as well as the community at large that you're serving. Right. And that's where <clears throat> I'd imagine the terms of reference and exploring all these things, there's lots of things to consider there because I'd imagine that sometimes, okay, what's the structure that we need? Um, how we can fit in with the organisation, we can yes. be semi-independent, yes. we? what's the relationship to one to have with leadership management and all of those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And I'd imagine that the, the, right, the right answer will vary depending from organisation to organisation, yeah. from need to need. Yes, it will do. But my, the, the key point here is mm -hmm. that whatever it is you want to do, um, ensure that your goals, your mission or whatever dovetails with the, the direction of the organisation. Yeah. It's pointless if the organisation is going this way <laughs> and you are going the other way, yeah. it just won't it's work. It's not going to work. No, it's because about you're, aligning you're your work. Exactly. And that's the important point. Um, you know, what staff networks do are really important, yes. but first and foremost, your employees. Yeah. <laughs> no, you I are like employees that. first. Yes. And I think <clears> sometimes <throat> people you know, they see themselves as this satellite group, mm. a pressure group, and I don't think that's <laughs> helpful. I, I, I think that's such a very powerful point. I'm so glad, yeah. Sharon, you made that point. With, with that, I guess that the point is that also is then really, uh, there's a number of things that are obviously important. It, of course, in the menu of things that you're doing is mm. apt for, for the, so the, the group that it is that you're serving. But I think there's something about that the thing that you touched on already, that kind of partnership, there may be all sorts of different um, organisations or people within the organisation uh, um, who can help you to achieve that. Or who've got similarly unions, there might be HR, there may be learning and development. So what you're wanting presumably is develop strong, rich relationships Absolutely. with them so that you can they can see you as an ally. Yes. Um, and uh, and that all sorts of things can happen. And that you should be working collaboratively. Uh, yes, I think that's fundamental. But also, it's about being this trusted source of information. Right. You are representing the collective voice of a minority group who are employed by that organisation. Mm -hmm. What you say needs to be powerful, it needs to be evidence-based, it needs to be practical right. and offer solutions. So when, so when people come to you and say, we're thinking of doing this, what do you think the impact right. could be? Right. Then you know, think through what that what that right. looks like. I just want to touch on before we close because sure. um, I've got a workshop to run as well, isn't it? But 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 what I'm so excited about about this, and one, one thing that strikes me is that, and I know you touch on this point, is that 
your terms of reference and all the evidence that things that you pointed to yeah, gathering yeah. will then point to let's face it a business case yes and i guess that it's really important to have that business case because i guess there might be a number of things that you need to look at mm -hmm. how is it going to be resourced is a, is funding necessary can can the group within itself do that people might need things like time off and what are the skills and so on for the people within the group or the people who are leading yeah. it that need to run because mm -hmm. they're going to need to especially if it's a challenging environment be skilled, isn't it? I mean, I spend a lot of time kind of coaching and mentoring yes. people to make sure that they're ready for that because it's it can be a challenging environment. Anything you want to say about about that whole soup full of issues there, Cheryl? Wow, the, the, I would say firstly that leading, chairing, call it what you will, <laughs> a staff network is is like no other role. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. but it's great because you learn a great you, you learn lots of skills, you learn about yourself and so mm -hmm. on. So there, let me just get that out yeah. there. Um, there's there's two things for staff networks. I would say that they have an important role to play, mm -hmm. and it's not about individuals. Mm -hmm. It's about the collection, mm -hmm. the collective, I should say, mm -hmm. and that's so important. Let's park egos mm -hmm. and let's focus on the issues at hand mm -hmm. and finding solutions to mm -hmm. those. If we could only do that, we'd solve so many problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, issues. I know. <laughs> um, and I would say to organisations that you know, if you have staff networks or you're thinking about staff mm -hmm. networks. In, in any other area of the business, you will consider what resources are needed mm -hmm. and what the outcome is you're looking for mm -hmm. um, and what capacity and skills are required for the people mm -hmm. in that area. And I'm saying the same is required mm -hmm. for staff networks. Yeah. If you believe that they can help mm -hmm. solve issues in your organisation, then invest in them. That, I don't mean throwing a large budget at them or anything like that. I'm talking about investing in their capacity, thinking through the resources, think a little bit creatively about what they need and how you can help I, them. I really like so there's that two, I think there's, there's roles for both, both the corporate as well as the staff networks. It's about those at the top, those really at the grassroots coming together to solve those key issues that are real in the organization. I, I really like that employees. because I think then there can be so many opportunities, aren't there? There's a talent, let's say there's a talent plan, a development plan, there's yes. this and that. You therefore have, as you've kind of, you pointed to, that therefore this, this, this resource of, of women, LGBT staff, whatever the group is, staff with disabilities and so on, and you realise that the targets and that you've got talent within this particular group, whatever that group is, that, that you can be utilising this kind of network for... Uh, 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 um, um, uh, um, for within that whole program, yeah. so there's a real opportunity, Absolutely. isn't it? There is. Uh, I, I guess. Um, I, just before we close, I just want to touch on a couple of things. I want to ask you a little bit about things that you would like to see that the great staff network of today or tomorrow would be doing. Um, but I also want to ask a little bit about. I guess one of the challenges that can emerge is this thing about where people who aren't that target group kind of sometimes feel left out. Presumably, that's why you mentioned get the soundings out from people who aren't that target group. So, for example, if we're Black and Asian minority staff and people who are not Black and Asian minority staff from a disability staff group or a women's group, and the men are feeling left out, is that one of the reasons why you say to get that soundings? So you can make that case to why this group exists. Abs in the first absolutely, place. and it, it, it's often those the group of people who really um, don't really understand what staff networks are, that's where people can face a lot of turbulence. Right. If they're in the middle management grade, they want time off to go to a meeting. Mm. If the manager doesn't really understand why, mm. then they're not going to be very forthcoming and saying, you know, they're going to be focused on the day, the yeah. day job. Yeah. And I think the, the message there for those type of managers or for people who don't really understand, it's about if you believe that your organisation should be a fair one, mm -hmm. should one, you know, where there's justice, mm -hmm. let's call it justice, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. here, and there should be equity, mm -hmm. then staff networks can help bridge the gap between the rhetoric and the reality. Mm, I like that. And it's about ensuring that they, it's hearts and minds, it's understanding, mm. maybe if you remove the word black and Asian and put mm -hmm. something else in there, mm -hmm. it, they may understand what you're mm -hmm. talking about, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, some... I, some women's network talk about how do you get the male allies mm -hmm. on board and just say, well, you know, the, the, think about the women in your life. Mm -hmm. Imagine if they were going through some of the situations I that see. female employers go I through see. here. I see. How would you react to that? I what would you see. do to change that? So it's about turning the thing around so they can understand things. I'm not saying that's the answer or that will always work, but it's thinking differently about how to convey those key messages to those I, I people such who would point. never actually encounter that themselves. They walk in a, shall we call it a privilege, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not their fault, this is not blame mm -hmm. or anything, but it's about 
thinking through and helping them to understand what it's like to be an employee of a certain minority group um, at that time. That's a, such a powerful point. Um, just then, as we close, what are the kind of things that you would like to see, um, you may have already seen this in some staff networks, um, effective staff networks of tomorrow uh, 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 doing or or, or being, because your background, am I right, your original background, part of it was in, in, it was in, human, in around human resources and yes. people's development. So what would, what would you, both in terms of the work that you do now as a coach, as, as somebody who's a specialist consultant with staff networks, and given your background within organisations, what is that you'd like to see the effect of staff networks of today and tomorrow doing? Um, I think that's a big question. Mm. It's huge. So I think that's all, uh, I love asking those kind of questions. Uh, yeah. I think to, for me, what comes to yeah. mind immediately are a, a few things. Yeah. Uh, number one, it's staff networks helping organisations to be those real drivers of diversity. Right. So really driving through diversity, not just paying lip service, but when you look across the the, the levels of the organisation, from the most senior to the most junior, you see diversity across the piece. Mm -hmm. The second thing is being inclusive by instinct. Mm -hmm. So you're automatically oh. thinking through, how is this going to impact on certain groups of people? Yes. You may not know the answers, but use your staff networks to do that. Right. And I think there's something around being generous in, in, in grace, how you treat people, in showing some compassion. Uh, I think staff networks, when they are effective, and when you have a receptive organisation, those type of things come together. I get what and you're it saying. unearths <laughs> talent, it really boosts the productivity, it really creates, a, you know, cultivates a culture right. where people want to work for right. you. That's what you want. You want right. the best to come and work for you. Yeah. And if the best doesn't look like your board members, you know, if they're put off because they cannot see a diverse mm. board membership, they cannot see a diverse workforce, mm. then you have a, you're missing out on the mm. best. Um, so, that, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. I think that's a wonderful point to leave it on. Sharon, thank you very much. People are trying to find you. What's the best place for you to find, to find you and to find um, the Incredible Power of Staff Network? Well, to find me, go to my website, www.thepowerofstaffnetworks.co.uk, yep. and you can purchase the book from there. If you like uh, the e version of a book or a Kindle, it's also on Amazon. Um, Waterstones, but yeah, go to the website, lots of information. Um, we have a newsletter, so feel free to subscribe to the newsletter, Power News. And yeah, we're there to, to serve and help Staff Networks be effective. Well, so there's also consultancy work and, uh, and advice? And Absolutely, so. yes. We do coaching, we uh, help Staff Networks who are from, you know, at the embryonic stage. We help, um, you know, the HR team, equality and diversity team Great. understand how to work more effectively with their Staff Networks whole range of activities. Brilliant. Well, so it's just been a pleasure. Get in touch. No, a thank pleasure. you. Thank you so much for your no, time. No, thank you. It's been